Hi, I'm John Knudsen with River Channel, and today we're here with Drew Spielman, the fire chief for the city of Hudson. Drew, you got a beautiful facility here. How about giving us a tour? Absolutely, come on in. Okay, Drew, we're here in the lobby at the fire department. Why don't you explain a little bit from the history? Sure, so we just had our 150th anniversary this past year, so we've been around serving the citizens for 150 years. Um, surprisingly enough, this is only our fourth facility we've ever been in. Um, they were our downtown, I can't remember exactly the street, but they were on second. They moved in under City Hall, built the building across the street, and then they came up here. So. Yeah, I imagine back 150 years ago as the carts and horses back then. Yep, absolutely, yep. There was uh, horses, and then we moved into steamers and on up into the modern apparatus of today. So We're going to see some of those trucks a little bit yes, later. Absolutely. So I guess one of the key uh, items here that we have on display is the actual original charter from 1873, wow. all the members that, that started the fire department. And then just some more. Some of the old apparatus. Yeah, some of the old equipment that was used over the years, some of the original oxygen bottles that were used over time, and, and uh, just pictures, you know, yeah. all that history. That's, A lot of history. Well, let's, let's head into the administrative part of the building here. This is kind of uh, where everything happens during the day. There's only two of us that are career firefighters here. Everybody else uh, is paid on call volunteer. So the biggest asset I believe we have on the department is Karen. Kern, our administrative assistant. She's pretty much runs the place, if you will. Um, coming over here, uh, our other full-time employee is Mike Peruca. He's our fire inspector. Hi, Mike. Hello. I'm gonna give a shout out to Mike here for uh, years at RPG and Resco and then at Catalyst Sports Medicine. Mike was always the fire inspector for our facilities. We really appreciate the job that he does for the city. Yep. Thanks, Mike. And I will point out the, uh, that in our fire district, uh, we have over a thousand inspectable properties wow. that have to get done uh, once a year. So how many inspections a day might Mike do? Well, depending on his schedule, he's looking at five to, between five and 20 a day he'll oh, get done so out. to get everything done. So yeah, yep, a lot of work there to do. So my office is over here. We have some workstations for our officers when they can come in to report, stuff like that. You might have a map that shows your geographic yeah, area absolutely. that you cover. Yep. So, <clears throat> We not only uh, provide services for the, for the city of Hudson, we also provide services for the village of North Hudson, uh, the entire town of Hudson, and then about one third of the town of Troy. Square miles might uh, be? About 39 square miles, 39 square and miles. about a population of about 32,000. Oh my gosh, Yeah, it's so a big area. It is, yep, it's a big area uh, to cover with 40 paid on call volunteers. Yeah, but, um, they one, do a thing great that's, job. one thing that's always important uh, on a fire call, I assume, is you know getting the volunteers here and out. What might be a uh, average time from call to the trucks being released? Yep, so right now uh, we're averaging from the time a 911 call is placed, the time the first truck leaves about nine minutes. Wow. So um, obviously we're always looking for ways to improve that, yeah. but being that nobody is here, uh, staff career-wise, they all have to come in from their jobs, come from home, you know, stuff like that, get here to get on the apparatus and go out. I think so. everybody knows uh, probably the biggest expense along with the personnel and stuff is the capital equipment. And you guys, you know, from the parades here in Hudson with the 4th of July parade yeah. and everything, you guys have an impressive array of equipment. Maybe we can go take a look at that next. Absolutely, yep, right. come on out. So Drew, I know one of the leading causes uh, for deaths of firefighters is heart attacks. Yes. What do you do to help your staff? So when the building was built, that uh, was, was in mind, um, how to keep our members safe. So they create a wellness center within the fire department. So uh, our members can come in here and use the weights, use the treadmills, uh, stay in shape. Um, it's just a way, a good way of uh, relieving stress and readying your body for for those stressful incidents. Well, I know, and, and we're probably gonna see some of the equipment in a minute, but I know firefighters can wear anywhere from 100 to 140 pounds of extra yep. gear, depending on what the, the call is. Yep, absolutely. And so the fitness, strength and conditioning, and aerobic conditioning are just essential. Yes, uh, and the big thing is too, uh, the strength conditioning, everything is for injury prevention also. Yeah. Yep, so, um, in fact, we can go take a look at some of the gear here. So, like you were mentioning, um, all the extra gear that we wear, put on. So Impressive. this is uh, our gear room. So our members are required to come to the station, dress out, respond to the scene on apparatus. Um, we have 40 members currently, and this is, is our gear room where they come up, gear up before they go out to the truck. So, so up to 40 volunteers can respond to a call. Potentially, yep, absolutely. Impressive. And then maybe the fire trucks next? You yes, get, yep, uh, we'll go out there. So they come in, come in here, they dress, then we go out this way. Um, I will mention too that we have uh, what we call like a status screen. Okay. So everybody has an app on their phone. 
Uh, so when an incident comes in, they can press if they're coming to the station or if they're unavailable. So it's a quick way for our guys to look at the screen and know how many people are coming. Um, I, as a chief, look at that going to a call, knowing if I have to call mutual aid, you know, another department to help if we don't have a lot of guys coming, um, or just to know how many people are around. Terrific. So yeah, yeah, it's a great it's a great asset to have that. Okay, Drew, this is uh, this is where all the big equipment is. Can you explain a little bit to uh, to our viewers the different types of equipment? Yep, that absolutely. You have? Um, so everything's kind of based on the type of incident that it goes to. Um, we have a couple brush trucks. Uh, those are uh, for use for vegetation fires, anything that's off-road. They're four-wheel drive, high-clearance vehicles. Um, going over here, um, we have what we call a squad company. Um, it's used mainly for car accidents and rescue type calls. So this carries um, our extrication equipment, carries our rope rescue equipment. Uh, some of our hazmat equipment is on there. So that's, that's very specialized more in the rescue side of things. Um, the next two pieces of apparatus are our engine companies. Uh, these are the workhorses of the fire scene. So they have the, the pumps on them, uh, 15 gallon per minute pumps. They carry 750 gallons of water, thousands of feet of hose. So those are, when people think of a fire engine, this is what they think of, the typical, uh, the typical ones, yep. Drew, I noticed they all have an exhaust vent on them. Can you yes. explain a little bit about the importance of that and keeping everything clean? Yeah, and that, yeah, exactly. It's, it's to keep um, the environment clean in here, um, cleanliness-wise, particulate-wise, but mainly more so for the health, health of the firefighters. We're not breathing in that diesel exhaust, Terrific. so, yep. I think back here we have uh, the big extender. Yep, uh, the ladder truck, our ladder, ladder company, truck. yep, yep. So this is a 101 foot aerial. Um, so the main, the main job of a ladder company on scenes is, is rescue, uh, ladder work, um, salvage and overhaul, that type of stuff. They, they're more tool oriented. These guys, you know, the engines are more fire oriented. So what's the extension on the ladder truck? 101 feet. Yeah. Yeah, yep. So. And how much, what's the capacity for water in these vehicles? Uh, 750 on the engines, 500 on the ladder truck. And then behind us here, we have our two tenders or tankers, and these haul water. Okay. So our smaller one carries 2,200 gallons of water. Our big truck carries uh, 3,200 gallons of water. And the reason for that is, is uh, half of our area that we protect is non hydrated Right. We have to haul the water out to the scene. Right. And then so you'll have to come back to Hudson. Come to back a to a hydrant refill and haul more water back out. Yep. Terrific. So. And then depending on the size of the fire, we may call more tenders from area departments because there'll be times we could be pumping between two and 5,000 gallons a minute at a fire, so you can do the math. It doesn't take long to get rid of water, so. Yeah, it's incredible. Well, I know this facility was built with the idea of expansion and potentially a full-time staff on site at some point. Correct. Maybe the next thing we can look at are uh, the start of those living quarters uh, as the expansion may take place? Sure, we can do that. So in the anticipation of the expansion and, and the capacity that you could serve, uh, what have you got going on up here? Yep, so when the station was built, it was built for expansion like you mentioned. Um, right now, um, like we talked about before, we only have uh, 40 paid, paid per call volunteers. Um, but as the city grows, the area grows, our call volume goes up, we're gonna be looking probably at hiring full-time staff to okay. deal with the call volume. And we do have uh, living quarters built upstairs here so to accommodate many, that. How many firefighter rooms might there be? Six. So we okay. can accommodate six full-time people. Okay, Perfect. very good. Yep. Got some more of the memorabilia yeah, from past yep. years here. Yep. It's great to remember the history. It is, it is. Well, let's go look at uh, some of the other facilities. Sure, here. yep. Wow, Drew, this looks like some specialized equipment, obviously, for the water. Yep, absolutely. So, again, another one of our brush trucks, um, but we use that more so to, to pull some of our stuff. Um, our big boat over there, we just pulled it out for the winter. Um, that normally goes in about May. It's docked down by the dike next to the, um, the dinner, dinner cruises, I guess, if you will. Um, it has a firefighting capability. It has a pump on it, a 500-gallon per minute pump has a lot of uh, rescue capability. Our dive team uses it. That's, That's about 20 foot? Uh, 24 foot, yep. 24 foot, okay. Yep, so, and then our smaller boat for like Lake Malalu, sure. stuff like that. And then we also have a UTV, and that gets a lot of use out at the state park. Oh, good. Um, you know, you have the weekends out there where there's several thousand people 
Um, now that they've built the uh, mountain bike trails out there, we've had quite a few incidents on the mountain bike trails okay. where guys will go down or people will go down, we use that to go out and get them. So, so Drew, uh, what happens when more volunteers respond than what might be needed for an incident? Yep, so our, our um, rules, or our procedures are that if you don't respond on the call but you come to the station, you have to wait for all the apparatus and to return. Okay. So we've created a, f a facility here where, the, where they can come in and, and wait, get prepared for the next call. Um, we do have simultaneous calls. It's, it's not uncommon to have two calls at one time. Multiple events. Multiple, yep. yep. So, uh, and I, I assume there's some paperwork involved too with oh reports. Yeah. Every things, call or? gets a report generated. We have our workstations for doing our reports. Um, you know, everything gets logged in the book. Um, everything gets tracked. People get signed in. So um, we're kind of an uncharted territory right now. We're um, at a little over 500 calls for the year already. Wow. We have two and a half months to go. Um, our previous record was 490, yeah. so we've smashed Oregon that record this year. Yeah. So yeah, I, I would suspect it will be, yeah. you know, five, 550, 600 before the year's done. So just goes to, to show the growing community and the growing need out there for services. Wonderful. Well, Drew, this is a beautiful room. Uh, looks like a community room, meeting room. What it you, is. You, this is our, this would be our training room. So um, I, I don't think I mentioned before, but we train every Monday of the month. So this is a lot of times where we do our training. Um, in the classroom here, but it also serves as a community room. So this is also a uh, polling location for the city. Um, the Red Cross uses it for blood drives. Very important. And uh, all the city departments use it for meetings. Wonderful. So, yeah. Well, you have a, a beautiful facility here, a more than capable staff. The city of Hudson's awfully glad to have you here. I'm John Knudsen for the River Channel saying thanks for joining us.